Hey folks, welcome to another video from a plain truth.info. I want to get more into the hurricanes, how they're creating the hurricane. Land, air, and sea uh, are using all their equipment to do this. They've been studying it for long periods of time. That report was from 2007. Uh, here's them showing seeding the clouds for hurricanes. Here's Hurricane Katrina with the uh, chemtrails being sprayed above them, but it's not just based on the aerosol spraying. This is Operation HAMP with the government. Hurricane Aerosol Microphysics Program, folks. Here's all their meetings they're having. There are little secret meetings on hurricanes. This was back in 2010. They've, been, they've known about hurricanes, how to make them, how to slow them down. We haven't had any hurricanes for a while, and now all of a sudden, big whammo that's not going anywhere. Generally, when it reaches land, it dissipates, and this one's just gaining power. And it's gaining power because of all the operating systems on the land, the sea, and the air to keep it there. And this is what I'm going to be proving out here in this documentary, is how this is a weather terrorist uh, activity. This is weather terrorism. This is weather wars. It's also uh, climate collapse as well. But this is directed energy. Here, look at, see, they're using uh, water surface air coolers to seed clouds. This is back from 2010. This, they've been doing this for decades, 50 years, it says. They've been manipulating the weather, folks. What do you think they've been able to develop? How good have they gotten at it? Well, I'm going to show here in the video, not just wet surface air coolers when it comes on land, how they're increasing the rain potential, but also keeping the uh, circular pattern, countercyclical, uh, counterclockwise pattern going but also how they're using it in the oceans with their Seabay SBX-1 platform uh, Nexrad Doppler devices to steer the weather. Also the silver lining projects, the ships that are using ocean water salt, making water vapor machines to combine with the uh, cloud condensation nucleol and the barium salt sprayed in the skies. But also a new one, uh, I, was sent a I was sent a patent, a Google patent, from um, a gentleman in the comment section or lady about, uh, I think it's Truth Channel it was named, and uh, really appreciate it because it brought home this new document about how hurricanes are being controlled from up above. High altitude uh, planes and whatnot are manipulating uh, the hurricanes as well. It's very, very well done, well known how to manipulate hurricanes at will. They've been studying this for decades and decades and decades with the best and the brightest. But first, I want to get around to all the weather going around the world. It's crazy time, folks. It's going to get crazier. Be prepared, but let's get into it, okay? As I've been reporting now for a few weeks, the weather's gone out of control everywhere. Here we had the Luciferian Europe heat wave back in August 4th. It was uh, 117 degrees in Greece and Italy. Uh, it's <laughs> out of control. Uh, and this is Siberia, captures the worst Siberian fires in 10,000 years, June 30th. Now, what they're using these fires for, folks, and here's a map, and let me expand this out. And this is a Global Forest Watch. Look at the concentration down here in Africa, and look at the concentration of fires everywhere. What they're using the fires for is for the carbon to increase the uh, weather uh, manipulation, to create weather. And this is what uh, Weather War 101 has been claiming. Look down in Africa. They're using the dust and the fires, the, the dust storms, in order to create weather. Now, whether you say it's a collapsed weather system or weather terrorism, it's both. They can do what they want, but they've lost control. I think it's a combination of both. But here you can clearly see that it's not just Europe. It's a worldwide cataclysmic event that is occurring right now, real time, and it's going to get a lot worse, unfortunately, sad to report. So let's get into this more. And what I just noticed, which is also interesting, is here uh, they're talking about this 10,000-year uh, uh, NASA image, 10,000 uh, years, June 30th. 2017 and here up in Siberia they're not showing those fires hmm and they're naming uh, the new weather patterns weather clouds the meteorologists are coming up with new names for everything that's going on in the world this has been going on last week or a week and a half ago in Brazil and France all of a sudden the water rushed out like a tsunami was coming this happened in Brazil and then happened in France and it's not being reported anywhere but look at the boats the water just suddenly rushed out and it went away uh, due to the counter cyclical or counter cyclones they're blaming it on now uh, as this guy reports here take a listen and this right now is going in France 
this actually happened. Water is receding, the ocean water is receding in France. That's what happened. So yeah, but the water, don't worry, the water is already coming back. That's what they're saying. We have video of it. We're going to show you. This is being sent by a very special subscriber. Now, this is what I want to show you, folks. This is the coastline. This is Africa and Europe's coastline. We have two enormous, what they're calling, I believe, anti-cyclones. And these are these babies are responsible for the water uh, being sucked away. Now, this is right now, this is a live feed from France. And the water, you can see the water is coming back, right? But the camera is moving because someone is, well, this is a live feed, you know, in the, those fixed webcams. Yes, somebody's moving the camera, right? So you can clearly see the water is coming back. But... So this is from One Pacific Redwood. I believe it's from the... Uh, 25th so when the first storm was first uh, uh, eye of the storm was first coming on shore in uh, Houston and you can see the, the water generation vapor devices if you look on the land you see the burst and there it is coming off of Cuba and there it is coming on land and bursting and there you see in New Orleans or Florida you see the burst of weather that are coming when they get on shore with these water vapor machines there's uh, offshore vapor water vapor machines as we'll get into as well but here he's pointing out that as soon as it comes on shore there wasn't that big a storm and all of a sudden it got intensified 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 and then they're parking it now over Houston over Corpus Christi and it's going to remain there for days so we'll have more of this but here's your evidence folks you can see the generation devices look when it hits the land boom it just explodes these are the water generation, uh, water vapor generation devices, the wet surface air coolers. And here again, you can see, as he's showing you, how this is being created. It comes in and it bursts. Now, this is keeping the weather in a cyclical pattern. These are water vapor machines being used in the opposite direction to keep the storm in place. Instead of moving it, they're keeping it parked there for days. They announced they were going to do it. They own the weather. They control the weather. They're using the weather as a weapon. It is killing people. This is terrible. This is horrible. Now out here in California, we're having a heat wave. They just took a false dome off of us here in Northern California. And here you can see they are not allowing any type of weather patterns coming in, coming down from the north. They're being blocked as well from these ocean-based water vapor machines, which we'll get into in a little bit as well. But you can see California, we're experiencing, as I showed in yesterday's video, 175 degrees on the deck with ambient temperatures only in their low 90s. And they're reporting the temperatures in the low 90s when we're getting up to 100, 105. It's even hotter today, and it's supposed to get even hotter than that. So they're using, they're blocking the weather in California in order to keep the weather over Houston. And also, uh, you'll be able to see here, over here in the right-hand corner, you see up in the Dakotas, when they're, they're blocking the weather up there to keep it contained from down above. So this is a massive, massive operation being done by the weather terrorists. Uh, they're using all the tricks of the trade, as we'll get into in a minute about how they're doing it. But here you can see he's pointing out up there in the Dakotas how the weather systems are just being created on land out of nowhere. But again, you see California is completely blocked. The whole West Coast is being completely blocked. And as soon as they did that uh, on Thursday, the weather temperatures here in California just absolutely started soaring absolutely started going up so let's get into a little bit more um, and the first question people always ask well why are they why are they focusing on Texas what's it all about well here's one explanation that uh, uh, you might uh, think about many want to ask why the question why South Texas why now on the 25th anniversary of uh, the massive hurricane Andrew the uh, that hit before so this is from um, State of the Nation 2012, and they speculate uh, that's because Texas has been at the forefront of anti-illegal immigration movement, and that Texas legislators passed some of the strongest laws in the nation, <clears throat> which attempt to limit massive influx of unlawful immigrants from Mexico. Texas has been ground zero for the war on drugs practically forever. This is the mafia controlling the, the borders down there, along with the uh, royal families and um, the Vatican. Uh, maybe they're not wanting the competition, 
Um, number four, Texas is the second largest state in the Union, both in size and population after California. So California and Texas uh, are seeing the weather being manipulated quite regularly now. So that's what they came up with. I'm not sure I agree with the, the thesis, but there's much more to this than just um, <clears throat> the weather being caused to create uh, political agendas. In, in no way and no doubt is this about weather terrorism. These are weather weapons that are being used to murder and kill people. This is what we have to get used to, is it's happening all around the world. They can do it at will, and every time they got to do it bigger, because they can, for one, and two, the weather has collapsed, and yes, they're using it as a weapon as well. So yes, the weather has collapsed, and yes, weather has been weaponized. It's not either or, it's both. So how are they doing this? Uh, Weather War 101 uh, shows that they're using chemtrails, they're using wet surface air coolers, NEXRAD and Doppler devices to steer the weather and showing here with cooling plants with towers for water vaporation creation, nuclear towers and nuke towers that don't have it. Here's how we're going to get into how to show you how they pass the weather from one system, uh, one uh, water vapor tower to another and you can see how here it forms and games, games uh, uh, power from one plant to another. So they release the water vaporization into the air using these massive, massive amounts of water to create water vapor generation and shoot it up into the air. These are all across the country. And then what they do is they take from one station to the other and they use the Doppler uh, NEXRAD radar systems, radio frequencies, to generate the power to interact with the aluminum uh, to pass them from one station down to the next station. Here you can see the generation, I believe this is in Texas going on here. And this is how they make weather. They have to use the barium salts with the chemtrail spraying, the aluminum is to direct the storms, and the water vapor machines on land and on sh offshore, which I'm going to get into in a little bit, which nobody else is covering, is, is how they uh, direct it from the offshore, which is also how they're keeping Hurricane Horrible Harvey in place. They're keeping it set there. So I wanted to show you that this is how the water vaporation is created, but it also can be used to keep the storms contained. And that's what I want to show you when we look at this uh, this uh, video image from uh, what's happening here. See how it explodes? It just explodes from the machines. And that's from the ground-based machines. It's, it's coming up to the sky to connect with the, the cloud condensation, nuclear and barium salts, but it's generated from the ground. This is how they have to make weather or how weather terrorism is made. All right, so let's get it going. What's going on with uh, Harvey today? It is Saturday, August 27th, and here you see the eye of the storm parked right on the coast. Also look at New Orleans. It's not being reported. They're getting hammered, those poor people again. They had 20 inches of rain in an hour last week. The pumps all failed but one. They lied about it. People are getting flooded out. They're just an afterthought, but they're getting pummeled as well. Those poor people. Uh, and here we see over Houston. Notice the circle pattern, folks. Notice it, and here's the water va vapor generation devices, the wet surface air coolers. And they can make weather or they can steer weather either way. So here they got the weather they generated as we showed in the previous video. And here you see in its counter cyclical, counterclockwise direction. And here there's the steering devices, the, uh, the ground-based wet, uh, wet surface air coolers, water vapor machines, and also the NEXRAD Doppler systems. Uh, those are the next rad Doppler steering stations he's, he's highlighting here and he's showing you where they are and then also where the wet surface air coolers are. So this is what they look like. You see these cross hatches. This is all the wet surface water vapor generating machines to create the weather. And once they shoot it up in the sky, combine it with the barium salts, they can do anything with the weather folks. They can do whatever they want. And here Weather War 101 is showing you where all the facilities are, how they're being made, and what they're using to make the weather with. But it's also combined with the Doppler radar system, the next rad generation radar RF frequencies that are steering the weather. So let's go and, and show a little bit more about how they're keeping it contained. Here we show how it's keeping it contained onshore, but let's look at how they're containing it offshore as well and keeping it in its place, which will remain over Houston, at, they're saying, through Wednesday or Thursday. How do they know this? Because they're creating it. It's weather terrorism, folks. Now, as we back out and we take a look at Houston Center, uh, these massive frequency manipulation of harp, harp, harp is thoroughly obvious. And so look at, look at where it stops, where the storms come in. This huge, massive storm, and all of a sudden it stops and stalls. 
How did they know it was going to stop in this stall for days? Because they're creating it. Oops. They're creating the environment for this to do. And here it is, circulating circle. But what's keeping it in on the ocean? How come it doesn't just go back into the ocean if it's being stalled this way? And this is what we're going to look at. So also, now here's a different image. And I want you to notice carefully for these blips. See that line there? That's the ocean-based uh, NEXRAD systems, the SBX1 platforms that I'm going to show you here in a minute. That's what's controlling it from the other side of the circle. So they're, they're controlling it from both sides, creating this circular mass. They brought it on shore. They parked it on Houston like they planned. And now they're just going to let the deluge continue. Look at these bursts. Look at those lines, folks. Those are all radio frequency lines. Those yellow red lines you're seeing bursting it's not just on land it's on shore and these things have like 750,000 watts of power for each station they're massive they can be on the ocean they can be on land either way they can steer the weather and that's what nobody's talking about is these ocean based uh, um, radio frequency next rad generation uh, radio frequency devices that are helping steer the weather as well and I'm sure they're pouring tons and tons of aluminum and, and barium on top of it, spraying above this system as well. It's, it's design chaos. It's planned climate chaos. And it's weather terrorism. And these people that are doing this are murdering people. They're killing people, putting people out of their lives, all for their sadistic evil intentions. All right? So here's the sea-based SBX-1 Doppler uh, it's being said they're harp. These are, this isn't harp technology. This is Doppler next uh, next rad radar system. Look at these massive things. They tow them. They park them anywhere they want around the world, and it helps to steer the weather. This is what they're doing in the Gulf of Mexico too, as I showed you in the video, and you can look again to see how they're steering it. So this is something that Weather War 101 is not covering. Uh, One Pacific Redwoods not covering, and of course. AWOL Geoengineering Watch, who's not covering any of Harvey or any of New Orleans. I don't know where this guy's gone, but he's gone underground, and he's not even uh, covering the greatest weather event being geoengineered. And I don't understand it, but here you look at these massive things, folks. Why would they spend all this money? What is this all about? Well, this is about weather weaponization, weather terrorism, weather collapse. These are the massive, massive machines they have to use in order to uh, facilitate weather manipulation around the world. And they can tow these anywhere they want, folks, anywhere they want. This is what they look like. It is not harp. So don't harp on it anymore, okay? But look at the canoe in the front. Look at the paddlers. Look at how massive this thing is. All right, let's move on. So here's another patent uh, that I just showed, and this is what the article was further down. Furthermore, a water generator for the weather modification is provided, which is produced by mounting the water vapor generator for weather modification and the second aspect of the invention on a ship to allow vapor generator for weather modification transferable on ocean. The thermal exchanger is mounted on a ship is preferably composed of a hole arranged to the ship bottom as to withdraw seawater to form a wall, a wall part formed as to enclose the hole. And down here it says, by arranging the generator for weather modification on a ship, the vapor generator can be transferred to an appropriate position on an ocean to generate necessary clouds. Now, what is the ocean made of? It's made of salt. And that's why the barium salt is being used, and it's also being used from the ocean, too. And this is from 2007, folks, and no one's covering the ocean and, and uh, offshore-based water vapor racing machines that, that called Bill Gates called the Silver Lining Project that you can hear about uh, from this uh, from one of his scientists way back in 2011 in his home base in Microsoft Seattle. Here, listen. Organizing committee for inviting me and uh, also would like to thank my co-authors Phil Rash and Graham Feingold and the funding agencies. And uh, the geoengineering uh, we're talking about is about the deliberate m manipulation of the Earth climate. Uh, the project we are interested in is uh, marine cloud albedo enhancement uh, by using the seawater spray. They uh, suggest to uh, suggest injecting submicron sea salt particles to increase the marine strata cumulus cloud albedo to offset the 3.7 watts per meter square forcing from the doubling of CO2. And then later on, Sauter et al. proposed this uh, nice uh, wind-driven sprayer that can produce 
sea salt particles to increase the cloud drop number concentration by about 200 per cubic centimeter in a day. And then later on, Sauter et al. proposed this uh, nice uh, wind-driven sprayer that can produce sea salt particles to increase the cloud drop number concentration by about 200 per cubic centimeter in a day. Uh, precipitation started a few, a few hours later after the seeding, and uh, the precipitation along the plume uh, drives the formation of like a secondary track in between the plumes. So, but uh, if we to calculate the domain average uh, cloud albedo, it's, uh, the enhancement is more effective in a weekly precipitating case, especially in this uniformly seeded scenario. The reason is that um, in this case, you don't need a uh, so big uh, increase in uh, CCN number to stop to uh, weaken the precip sorry, <laughs> precipitation. So area coverage is more important in this scenario. So um, if you take a look at how the, the injected CCN are transported uh, in the boundary layer, uh, on the left uh, it shows the, the vertical cross-section along the sh uh, ship plume, and on the right-hand side is the across the ship plume. And vertically, uh, the injected CCN are mixed through the depth of the boundary layer in within minutes. And who do you think is funding the ocean-based, sea-based uh, silver lining project, water vapor generating machines to create this artificial weather? None other than Mr. Bill Gates. This is an article back from 2010. Uh, so this has been going on for a long time, folks. Technology is way advanced from where we are and what we think about technology. They've had it for a long time, this ability to make, uh, alter the weather, create weather, dissipate weather, steer weather from the ocean as well. So I want to thank uh, the Truth Zone for uh, this patent that he just uh, posted or she posted on uh, the comment section from my article yesterday or video doc from uh, on Harvey, Hurricane Harvey. Very important document here. September 9th, 2010, weather management using space-based power systems. Space-based power systems, a method of altering weather using space-borne energy, okay? Now, it says down here, free-floating power system elements are maintained in proper relative alignment, position, orientation, and shape using a control system. Energy from the space-based power system is applied to a weather element, such as a hurricane, and alters the weather element to weaken or dissipate the weather element. They can also make it more intense, folks. Okay. Now, this is what I want to bring your attention to, just for a quick sec. James Rogers, Hermosa Beach, Gary T. Spernak. They're with the Solarin Corporation. Let's take a quick look because it's going to apply a little later here when we get into this. So here's a press release from uh, 2016 from Solarin Corporation, next phase of their Space Solar Development Program, or SSP, Space Solar Development Program. Uh, and what you'll see is engineered zero emission electricity from space that's cost competitive with any terrestrial source of baseload electricity. Design, develop, integrate, test, and certify space solar power. Coming decade, it will perform unprecedented components, subsystems, and testing to validate all aspects. And the multi-billion dollar development program culminates with the launch of Solarin solar power satellites, operational certification, and the start of commercial operations and sales of electricity from their 250 megawatt SSC, SSP plant in the air, folks. So if we look at the team, which I always try and do, Dr. Rogers, co-founder, did Stinger's career at Hughes Aircraft, held key technical positions, developed the state-of-the-art systems for NASA, Department of Defense, field components for advanced space-based systems, spacecraft power generation, thermal and optical sensors. All right, so let's look at the other co-founder, Gary T. Spernak. Mr. Spernak has 33 years of experience in the industry. He's founder the CEO of Solarin. Uh, first commercially viable space solar company. Held a number of key positions at Boeing Satellite Systems. Has an extensive experience in space system development at Hughes. Managed a major national security program to include successful multi-million dollar R&D. That had to be for DARPA. Uh, and also he has a distinguished military career with the Air Force and other spacecraft project engineer at Cape Canaveral. 
all military guys, folks, running this program. All right, so let's get back to the uh, patent here. Uh, but before we do, real quick, I forgot about this. I wanted to show you. Russia announces issuance of space solar power system patent. This is just right at the same time of the previous announcement. Uh, the issuance of the key solar patent to Solarin. Now, Solarin now has key enabling SSP system patents in all of the world's major space faring countries. All of the world. All right. And one of the projects they've floated is used to space mirrors to reflect sunlight back, but that's not what they're doing the space mirrors for. This shows it right here, folks. Uh, let me get up the highlight. Um, but the basic gist goes something. Launch and robotically assemble several hundred or thousand identically sized modules in geosynchronous orbit. One part compromise, compromises mirrors to reflect and concentrate sunlight into solar panels that convert the energy into electricity. Converters turn that electricity in low intensity microwaves and are beamed to large circular receivers on the ground. All right, so they're in the business of making mirrors, which is going to play into what I'm going to show you here in this pattern again, okay? And here you can see the mirrors being used here to amplify and then send down to the ground base stations, uh, whether it be a radio beacon or the solar panels here. And here you see the mirror image again in this next figure. All right, so let's get into the hurricanes, how they're using it to uh, affect hurricanes and steer the hurricanes and intensify it. And here's just one more to show you how they're using amplification mirrors, radio frequencies, and sunlight to direct and amplify weather and amplify the sun's uh, radio frequencies as well, the cosmic rays. All right, so here in figure 18, we start to see the hurricanes and how this is applied and how it applies to Hurricane Harvey as we speak today. Um, and this is a chart here, which I want to, there we go. All right, so here's the space-based power system at Solarin. Here's the radio frequency RF energies, and here they're concentrating it off the coast of Florida. Isn't that interesting? Remember, this is a patent from 2010, folks. Okay, now here's how the mirrors come into play. Sunlight comes in, reflects, power module, output mirror, weather element, RF frequency. Remember how they bring the weather up from the Gulf of Mexico way down south? It started seven days ago, August uh, 16th, I believe, and then they use the radio frequency energy off the coast. And you see the radio frequency tracking beam. You see it's not a, it comes on shore in the storm's path. This is the exact path that they came on. I guess that's Florida, but the same path that came into the Gulf of Mexico that Weather War 101 was showing using RF tracking beams, okay, to steer the weather intensely. And as you go down, you see the groups of thunderstorms. And, folks, it's showing you exactly how they do it. This is how they take the weather, create the hurricanes, amplify the hurricanes, hurricane air flows. This will be in the show notes. They have the science down on this, folks. Here's the hurricane. Here's all the RF heating zones that alter the storm's paths. See how they're next to shore or onshore, but also they're in the, in the uh, oceans and in the, uh, in their seaborne as well. Okay, so here's the radio frequency being one and a half uh, gigawatts, I guess that is, as the airflow goes up in the beam, superheating, and uh, RF heating zone alters the path. It's showing you how they do it, folks. It's right here for anyone to see, and they use surface air temperatures, radio frequency beams, cold air, inversion layers, create the easterly atmospheric pressure. Where's the Harvey on? It's in the, in the east, coming up from the Gulf. I'll put this in the show notes and, and you can read more, but I want to get to the very end here and just amplify what I'm, what these drawings are saying. So this is in the summary and what is claimed here is a space-based power system for altering the weather. Okay. And you can get into it and it lists all the different types of ways they are altering the weather with these systems. They have it figured out, folks. The technology has been readily available for a very, very, very long time. Again, thank you for putting this uh, very important document um, to my alert. I really appreciate it. Truth Channel. And here's the documentation at the very end of this summation of the uh, 
45 page document on water vapor machines, space based and otherwise. Uh, what is claimed is a space based power system for altering weather. Generate electrical energy from the collected sunlight and convert the electrical en electric energy into radio frequency energy that is applied to a weather element and to alter and weaken the weather element. They can also increase it, folks. Number five, radio frequency energy generated by the space-based power system and converts absorbed energy to thermal energy that is transferred to the weather element to alter and weaken the weather element. Six, the system of claim wherein the energy absorbing element is aluminum oxide. What do they spray in the skies with barium? Aluminum oxide, folks. Here it is. Number seven, it claims wherein the energy absorbing element is plastic. Is this why we have the Texas plastic patches and plastics being allowed to be permeated throughout all our oceans? So to get this, look at the size that they're energy absorbing. The element has the length of 0.6 of an inch and a width of about 0.01 inch and a thickness of 0.001 inch. We're talking tiny, tiny material here, folks, for using energy absorption. Energy absorbing element is sufficiently low so that the energy absorbing element is substantially buoyant with the water element. So it stays up on the surface. <laughs> so that's why they're using the plastic. All right, let's move on. Bless you. All right, here is further proof of ocean and sea-based weather modification. We method for weather modification and vapor generator for weather modification. This was a uh, filing date October 24th, 2007. The water vapor is jetted towards the sky at a state of collimation through a vapor discharge pipe. A cloud for blocking sunlight is formed in the sky from the water vapor jetted to reduce the temperature of the Earth's surface. This enables a weather modification without discharging any deep greenhouse. So when you're in the truth movement and you can't find answers, you have to do the research yourself. And this is what I've been finding out about barium salt since few uh, geoengineering and chemtrail websites or any, uh, as a matter of fact, except for Weather Wars 101, can I find out any information on barium? So fun facts about barium salt and aerosol applications for weather modification. But first, a warning from the Environmental Protection Agency. Use flame-resistant rubber gloves and clothes, aprons, goggles, and a gas mask. Smoking the area is forbidden. Thorough washing was required after handling barium. The University of Alaska has propelled barium into space in order to study the Earth's magnetic field lines. The military used barium salts over enemy territory in Libya, Panama, and Iraq to make the population sick. Barium in jets comes from the Status 450, an additive that has been u in use since 1962, and it's a secret. We can't know why they're using it or what's in it. So a recent report from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, one of the major aerosol spraying operation sites, confirms that Air, air Force has been spraying barium tit titanate across the United States to facilitate advanced radar studies. In the saline solution, the salt ions replace some of the water molecules so that fewer water molecules are available for evaporation. Therefore, the presence of the salt reduces the rate of evaporation. Very key, they're trying to save the water. When you have a curved surface such as a droplet, each water molecule has fewer nearest neighbors than it would have on a flat surface. So in droplets, they're much more rare. These droplets can be as small as 10 thousandths of a micrometer and contain only a few dozen water molecules. Here they're talking about the cloud condensation nuclear, CCN, we discussed earlier. Because cloud droplet and air temperatures are nearly the same, it appears that saturation vapor pressure depends on air temperature. Strictly speaking, it depends on the crowd cloud droplet temperature. This is why coming out of the, the wet surface air coolers, the temperature is 10, 15, 20 degrees cooler, which helps form rainwater. Uh, barium salt and geoengineering chemtrails are used to seed clouds to make raindrops, and combined with aluminum allows weather clouds to be steered from ground-based Doppler, Nex, Rad, Harp, or, e, or Ocean SBX platforms, which are basically uh, sea-based Nex, Nex, Rad radar system, systems.